All right, it's time for another calculator. That's a nice touch that took all the handles off and they don't get bent in the mail. Good job whoever did that. There it is. Cord looks a bit. You can't see that. Cord looks a bit iffy. It's all cracking. So that's probably going to have to be changed, especially right here. Complete failure. Missing one key. Well, I see in the window. But anyway, let's try and take some of this apart. See if we can see what. See if we can see if the machine's going to have a problem like the last one did. This is an electric one. Not really sure what handle goes where. That works. That's going to need a pin to go in there. First step, let's take this cover off and see what it looks like inside there. So there's two screws already missing there. Oops. Aha. Oh, that's interesting. These are black with white numbers. I wonder if that's their serial number. This would be what it wonder if that's aligned properly. Huh. Have to see about that. Sound doesn't seem quite right there, does it? This one's off. I'll have to see if it adds properly like that. This is one, two, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll have to see about that. There's a way to adjust these, but it's not a very easy thing to do. Right, let's flip this around. Okay. Oh, 
most of the ow, most of the weight of this is in the back with the motor. So one twentieth horsepower, seventeen twenty five RPM. So that's an induction motor. So gear train here. And yes, it looks like they're using cardboard gears in this one too. Oops, I triggered something there. There we go. Um, okay, so the point of interest is this. I'll turn it all the way around. So you can see on this one, this piece which was deteriorated on the last machine, the Martin XL. On the Martin XL, this drum here was pot metal and had puffed and swelled up over time and jammed the machine, but this one looks just fine, I think. Hopefully, it doesn't look, I see some scratch marks on it. It appears like, so I'm not quite sure what that's about. It seems very stiff. Doesn't seem to be locked up though. So, I think what I should do is make sure the motor is plugged in there. And see about putting a decent cord on this and see where we go from there. That seems to work. Remember on the Martin XL, I had to turn it a little bit to engage that lever. So I wonder if I put the Martin XL back together wrong. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how I could have because of the way that shaft was keyed, but anyway. So I guess the next thing to do would be to flip this up and see about how the cord attaches. Aha. Okay, so it looks like this cord was already replaced once. As you see, this here is the original cloth covered cord, and this is a, what, like natural rubber one. get this tape off here. This is different than my other I have another machine like this, I'm watching the EG9, which is a lighter version. And it has more features on it. This is an earlier version and actually you can see right there model EA 9 3707. So 3707 would be the serial number. Is that what we saw in here? Yep. 3707 is the serial number. EA is the model. And 9 indicates that it has 9 columns on the keyboard. My other margin is an EEG 9. It also has 9 columns on the keyboard. And on that one, there's a plate on the bottom. You can take the plate off and access it access the key stems, the key mechanism from the bottom. This one does not appear to be that way, so I'm not sure how you would get at the uh, power switch and electrical cord without taking the entire machine apart, which I do not want to do because then you have to realign all the keyboard columns instead of just the one or two that are messed up. So I'm seriously considering just splicing a cord onto this one. Unless I can take this panel off and get out of it, I doubt it. I don't think that's an access port. And of course my tape is ripping instead of coming off.
So I'm not sure how many different models of electric marchants they made. I've seen uh, EEG, there's the EB, I think there's a Model K that's also electric. Now this is the EA. I think the EB has um, power register clearing. And we also have automatic division too. This one does not have automatic division. It only has automatic multiplication. Um, the EEG9 is automatic everything. It has automatic multiplication, division, register clearing, and automatic power sh uh, carriage shift. And from what I can tell, that's one of the most advanced ones that they made. I think the Model K might have automatic division, but not automatic multiplication. I have to check on that. Okay, so now we're down to these wires here. I have to see about splicing something in here. But first, let's fold this, uh, lay this back down, and take another look at the top and see if it would be at all possible to access that. Yeah, here's the switch right here. It's a bit loose. Uh, this front plate comes off. So let me take this front plate off and take a look at what's inside there. Alright, so I was able to take this plate off of the switch here. I took out um, the screw holding the decimal pointers in and slid that down. I loosened up this screw up here to loosen that up a little bit. Took out one screw here and the two screws on the switch and then this plate slid out. So let's see if we can oh, this is interesting. Let's see if we can lift this up a little bit. Yeah. Oh. If you look at the if you look at the way this is wired, it has this wire coming in here and then going out to this wire over here. So I wonder if I loosen this up. I can get enough put on this wire to push that up here. There we go, maybe. Alright. So we're gonna have to work on it that way. Let me get this in a position where you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay. So let's see if we can take this switch out now. One screw there, and one screw here. Stab myself in the process. Right, we got one wire off. Got the other wire off. Alright. Let's take a look at that switch. That's just the screw fell out. Just the screw on this side fell out. That's pretty interesting. So this is the off position. This stays over here. You have the two contacts on either side here. When you turn it on, a little wall rolls over and connects the two contacts together. Of course, I'm not showing it in frame is off, the two contacts are separate, nothing connecting them on either side. When you turn it on, the roller goes in between them and connects them together. So that's one half of this equation. If you take a look, this is the um, wire, the neutral wire, well it's going to be the neutral wire that I've shipped here. Actually it looks like there might be this might not be the right place to strip it because it looks like there might be some more uh, strands that are further down. I'll just cut it off and strip it right at the end, but there are some strands broken off, so I should probably strip this back 
a little bit further. What I was going to say was, notice how dark the wire is? It's all corroded. Uh, that's not going to make a good electrical contact. So before you uh, connect that to anything, you should try and get some of that corrosion off. What I'm going to do first though is try and strip this back just a little bit further where there's some more strands. This way. Wire stripper was not designed for this cloth covered wire. But it might work anyway. Got one layer off. Is that, oh no, there's the. Okay, see? Look how much thicker the wire is here than here. Let's cut these extraneous strands off. And notice how it's not a good coppery color. We'll just take some sandpaper. Try and clean that up a little bit. See, now it's in much better shape and ready to make a much better electrical contact. Twist that together a little bit. A few more swipes here. Alright, so that's the wire that did not go to the switch. So that's going to be our new neutral wire. I'll restrip these two. Just an old power cord I had laying around. Of course, my wire shipper is not going to cooperate again. Really not cooperating. Come on. All right, let me fight with this for a while. Okay, so the switch is just about ready to go back in. I tied a knot in here as a strain relief because it doesn't look like the original cord had any sort of strain relief. So the next step will be trying to shove this back in here. Alright, so now we need this guy. So I can get one or two screws started on that. And I've put this on backwards, haven't I? It's not totally productive. I'll find that screw then. Should I put it on this way? I'll start the screw on the top first, since that's probably going to be the harder one. Now this is crooked on me, isn't it? Alright, so the answer goes all back together now. Let's see if we plug this in and get a calculator or we'll fire. No fire yet. No fire yet. Let's try 44. And nothing. Okay. 
up. Oh, no, okay. That's just latches down so that appears to keep it every time. Um, okay, let's investigate further. Plug this. There's a plug back here at the motor. Push this down, it should turn the motor on. I'm quite sure where that switch is. That just goes right into the motor, unless the motor is supposed to run all the time. The motor does move, it's just very, very stiff. So I can get some oil on there to see if that makes a difference. Although it, I think it would still move a little bit, even if it was. Looks like some sort of clutch or something. These must just be bushings over here, I guess. Not sure how much oil you can get on there anyway. Anyway, because it looks like it has a. So this end is freed up. This one's been moving pretty well. Looks like the motor might be the problem. I'm going to play with this for a while. So as you can see, we're not even getting power back to the motor stock. We've got about 9 volts AC back there. Now which way I throw the switch. So something's not right either with the switch or with the wiring. Let me investigate this first. Yeah, something's up with the switch. Let me see my meter here. When I probe one side, the neutral side, I get continuity. When I probe the hot side, I get nothing. So let's take the switch back apart and have some more fun there. Okay, so as you can see now, going from the hot side with the switch off, let's do that. We have nothing, I'm going to turn the switch on, we have continuity. So that seems to be fixed, plug the motor back in here, and let me check and see how the wire is routed underneath that. Alright, so as you see I had to flip that clamp around so that, um, because I shortened this wire a little bit, what I did was I took this apart, cleaned the switch, 
and I noticed that the hot wire going to the switch, um, a lot of the strands were broken on that. So I cut it off, stripped it back, and then we attached it, which made this shorter. So I flipped that clamp around so that it, oh, it's not super tight. So, let's double check continuity again. Actually, no, let's just plug it in and see what happens. Okay, so it's off now. Let's so find my cord in this mess that I have now. Uh, this is the cord. It's off. Let's plug it in. Let's see what happens. Still nothing. Alright, let's check voltage back at the plug then. Take that out. So right now, between these two volts, you can see that. And right now, I have nothing. 118 volts. So that should be good back there, unless the motor's burned up. You can check continuity through the motor. There's continuity through the motor. So if I plug this in, oh, it doesn't do anything. I have to push the button first. Some other motors just that stiff. Go back and forth a little bit more. I don't know. I'm going to play with this for a little bit more. Now, I must say that the motor is that stiff because when I turn it on, I can feel the table humming. So the motor just must be that stiff. So it looks like we're going to have to take it apart, which I really didn't want to do. Um, if you can see back here, this clutch type mechanism, see this is free on this side. That moves. This is really stiff. That's really stiff on that side. Um, and this is taper pinned on. So we can't really, unless this clutch comes apart pretty easy. Let me take a look at that. If this comes apart, I can just unbolt the motor and pull it off and have a better look at it. But I don't want to have to take this taper pin here out. Okay, so the motor actually came off pretty easy. There were only two screws in the bottom and there should have been four. I suspect someone was playing with this before. And the clutch was just these two pins just slid right out, no problem. And I can't even turn this by hand, so let's see what would be involved in taking this apart. Looks like I can just take two screws out of the back here. Actually, first of all, let's take these things off, which I think are supposed to hold the oil. See what the deal is with these. Ooh. Huh. That's interesting. So it looks like you're supposed to fill these up with oil, and then it licks the oil up into the bearing. Hmm. Right, I'll put that back on before it gets damaged. That's not going to really help us right now anyway. That's an interesting idea. Let's see. I can take the back of this off. I'd right, like to take the front off. That way, I don't have to worry about messing up any of the wiring back here. But because I think it's taper pinned on on the front, I don't want to have to. Interesting. Looks like the threads are 
Where's my camera? Looks like the threads are on the middle of that. And this should just split. I'm probably gonna have to tap it a little bit. Or more than a little bit. knife or something. As you can see here I got the back of the motor off. Um, this was actually set inside here but there's a little lip, a little cutout here you could pry it off so I pried it off. And the back doesn't actually look that bad. It's definitely in the front that was frozen. Um, I squirted some WD-40 and all around it to try and get it to pinch it in there and loosen up and it is better now so I can turn it by hand. It's not as smooth as it should be but I'm going to put it back together and Try and work it back and forth some more. Okay, so I got this back together. Now after working it for a while, you can see it does spin freely now. Um, and after I got it back together, then I filled these up with the regular oil. Uh, WD-40 probably won't last long term as the lubricant, but let's put this back on and see what it does now. Okay, let's see what happens this time. So it turns on. And get stuck on something. swing clutch back there. Okay. I wonder why this is yeah. Let me see if I can turn it by hand through a cycle. <laughs> 